Let's move ahead uh, onto the different uh, bridge domain configuration settings in terms of their effect on the packet flow. A detailed session on bridge domain configuration settings uh, explanation can be requested separately. I have a better uh, mini project kind of I have prepared separately. Uh, we'll we'll uh, share with you guys shortly uh, after I'm done with these videos. So let's understand the flow inside the fabric as, uh, based on the bridge domain configurations. Now first packet hits the leaf. Okay. First thing it checks if the packet that has hit the leaf is it an L2 or an L3. Uh, because we are understanding the layer 2 forwarding summary here, so I'll, I'll discuss about the uh, L3 part in late, uh, later sessions. Let's consider the packet hit is L2. Okay. Now it further checks if the destination of the leaf or the destination MAC address. Uh, does that leaf know the destination MAC? Yes or no? If it knows, good enough. Then it's uh, it further checks if the destination MAC is local to the leaf or you know uh, to another leaf. If it's local to the leaf, it forwards locally. Okay. This part I would like to draw again. This is. A work of uh, Broadcom ASIC. And if the destination leaf is not local to leaf, then the packet is forwarded and processed by the North Star ASIC. All right. Now we come back to this uh, place where leaf uh, does not know where the destination MAC is. Now under the bridge domain, there is another setting which is also called the L2 unknown unicast. So L2 unknown unicast means uh, it has two further options. It basically means how the L2 unknown unicast packets will be processed. If you don't know an unknown, unknown unicast package, which is L2 in nature, uh, either it will flood in the bridge domain or it will send to the hardware proxy Now if we assume that it will flood in the bridge domain, so whatever EPG Is present under that bridge domain Everyone will get to know about this and whosoever is has that destination Mac It will receive the packet ultimately but in case of hardware proxy This is actually the, uh, the the next hop address of the spine proxy. So in case of hardware proxy, the unknown L2 unknown unicast is sent to the spine proxy. Spine proxy then further checks if it knows the destination MAC or not. If yes, it sends the packet to the leaf. If no, then it drops. Okay. So this is how basic layer two forwarding works uh, inside the ACF fabric. Pervasive gateway. Uh, we actually learned we actually learned uh, just a small uh, single line definition in uh, one of our previous slides. And I'll give you a detailed view about this pervasive gateway. What this pervasive gateway is. As in the bracket, you you uh, can see it's it's mentioned SVI. As most of you know, SVI what SVI is. So similar to this SVI or we, uh, 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 the virtual interface, we have pervasive gateway in SVI. Now this pervasive gateway would be the default gateway of all the servers connected to the leaf switch. If this pervasive gateway is configured, this subnet here. this subnet this subnet here whatever endpoints configured under an EPG if they are using bridge domain BD1 for all those servers these IPs would be the default gateways okay further under default uh, these subnets we can define all these settings either 
it can be treated as a virtual IP address or make this IP address as primary in case of primary and secondary uh, HSRP kind of scenario. The scope of this subnet can be defined. Uh, should uh, either it should be uh, kept under the VRF only it should not be advertised externally or it can be advertised externally like advertise externally means advertise external to ACF fabric or it can be shared between VRF which is also called the route leaking among the VRFs further if we are uh, configuring multicast on this bridge domain we can uh, mention it the subnet control can be mentioned to query IP which means that uh, this particular subnet it's controlled by the courier IP which would be configured on the sub uh, this this uh, under this bridge domain then L3 out route profile this these two things are uh, configured in case of we are configuring any policy policy based routing or the PBR so I'll, I'll uh, very quickly read out whatever it's uh, written here so pervasive gateway is configured as subnets on the bridge, bridge domain okay as we can see here pervasive gateway is the default gateway and at the same time represents subnets IP ranges which belong to the bridge domain again this same thing pervasive gateway is installed as SVI to all leaf switches which have endpoints for the bridge domain now what does that mean Let's say for example, we have this leaf, this leaf and this leaf, okay. These are uh, L1, L2, why does it do like that? So let's say for example we have uh, these three leaves and we have some endpoints connecting to them and all these endpoints are configured to be on the same bridge domain. Bridge domain 1. Okay. So what happens is a uh, pervasive gateway is installed as SVI to all three leaves which have endpoints for the bridge domain. Okay, so this bridge domain, this this uh, pervasive gateway here, this IP will be configured as SVIs on all three leaves so that for every endpoint they have the they behave or they represent as the default gateway for these endpoints okay now uh, pervasive routes may be propagated to leaf switches which don't have local endpoint for that bridge domain like for example if you have a bridge domain a with epg a on only leaf one and bridge domain b epg b on only leaf two and a contract is tied between epg a and b then SVI A is created on leaf 1, SVI B is created on leaf 2 due to contract, route A is installed on leaf 2 without SVI A, route B is installed on leaf 1 without SVI B. I know you might have got angry now, let me simplify it again because we are trying to simplify ACI so let's try to simplify this as well. So what we are trying to say here is, uh, let's rub it. So what we are trying to do here is uh, this BD2 
bd one bd one okay so what we're trying to say here is uh, if there is an endpoint one under bridge domain one which is installed only on leaf one so for this because of pervasive gateway being configured the svi one will be uh, installed on this leaf one which will be the uh, pervasive gateway for ep1 similarly for ep2 under bridge domain 2 uh, if its existence is only on leaf 2 its pervasive gateway svi2 will be installed on leaf 2 now what if if we want to have a communication between ep1 and ep2 both ways so what we'll do is uh, we'll configure a contract which will allow let's say for example https or icmp traffic between them so that will be mentioned under the filter under the contract so if we configure a, con a contract what it actually does is uh, the route towards ep2 will be installed on leaf1 and route towards ep1 will be installed on leaf2 so this is a kind of route leaking that we do with the use of contract I hope that helps moving forward so here uh, it's showing uh, with an example how pervasive gateway works within uh, with this example so in this we have endpoints a b c and d as you can see here a b c and d I will consider only a b c d e uh, and f all of them okay so here a b c d e p g's are uh, are under the same bridge domain bd1 and endpoints e and f are under bridge domain number uh, bridge domain number 3 okay so if leaf has an endpoint bridge domain 1 has two svis configured as you can see 192.168.0.254 192.168.1.254 so those SVIs will be configured on all the leaves where uh, the single bridge domain is configured if leaf has an endpoint for bridge domain pervasive gateway would be programmed on the leaf now let's consider that we wish to establish communication uh, we wish to establish a communication between uh, C let's say C to E okay so we need to bind a contract between the two as we talked about in the previous slide by configuring a contract among them uh, it allows us to leak the required routes among them and the communication would be established point that is to be noted here is that only the routes are shared between VRFs and not the SVIs the SVIs stayed at their leaves okay there is a very small difference in that you you guys will understand what, what, what I am talking about now just to add one more point uh, to this is that uh, for L3 traffic leaf needs pervasive route to be spine proxy if the route 5.0.0.0 slash 24 is not installed on the leaf leaf will then drop the packet okay